Hey guys, this is Paul and Ray with the No Color Thick Skin Podcast. We're on episode three. Mm. Uh, you might notice that uh, if you're watching us, we are in a different uh, studio environment. Uh, we are very excited to try this out. Um, we're a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, so we're doing episode three. This, this one's called the great eighties babies. The great eighties babies. Yes. So, um, you want to walk us through what we're up to on this one, Ray? For sure. Um, so Paul and I wanted to give you all, um, just a glimpse of who we are and we wanted to break it down, not just for the men that we are now, but we wanted to go back and just kind of see, um, the lives that we we lived and the things that we saw just, you know, going from the 80s when we were born, um, the 90s and, and our formative years, uh, elementary, junior high, the things that we experienced in high school, uh, post high school and things coming into manhood and things that we, we, we saw um, during those times, just how the progression of life happens from just early adolescence, early all the way to, to now as adults. And um, Paul's going to share with you the many, many things that he's uh, seen and done over the years and places he's uh, been. And I'm going to do the same as well. And um, just um, just go go with this, go on this, this journey on this ride with us, guys. This is really cool, guys. I don't think I've really talked to many people as uh, going through a full timeline. This is like a, this is like, a, um, a life resume. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. A life resume. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's Although, good. you know, there's, I'm sure that there's stuff that maybe we'll miss, but you know, we're just trying to give you guys an idea. This is forming. This is how our perspectives were, were formed. This is how we view why the reason why we view things through the lens that we do. And um, we're going to start from the 80s and uh, move to the 90s and 2000s in that kind of a format and just kind of give you guys some things that really impacted us. Big time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. So um, we're going to be starting with the 80s. Um, and um, just so that our audience can kind of, you know, we've been talking before the show started, but. Um, just so we can, so we can include you guys in some of that. Um, uh, we'll just talk about our week a little bit. Um, how my week was pretty intense. <laughs> hey, first, <laughs> I, for, first of all, yeah, I'm glad you're back. Oh yeah. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad to be in this space with you, my friend. Uh, I'm a man, but I missed you, man. Hey, like, dude, you know, same. I missed you, man. I was like, God, man, we, you know, it's been a long time. We haven't given the people, you know, a little something, but I'm so glad to just be back around Sorry. you, man, and be here <laughs> with us that we, we were able to get this going. So first, uh, thank you all for being patient, but man, I'm just so glad to, to just be back in this space with you, my friend. Just same here. Know, so. Same here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went on vacation last week. Was it last week? Yeah. Not, yeah. Well, the week before last, I guess it was. Yeah. Um, I, I went to Colorado, went to go with the family, got away, did all the things, and uh, we got snow while we were there. It was awesome. And then I came back, and work is hectic. Yeah. <laughs> and when you, <laughs> you know, when you go on vacation, and then you come back, it's like, oh, a slap in the face. Crazy. With reality. Yeah. And uh, everything needs uh, needs attention. Uh People need attention and, you know, uh, problems need to be solved, all that stuff. So that's what I've been doing for yeah, the last just week. Is, putting out little fires here and there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, all good stuff, just busy. And I um, uh, went to my next to last daddy-daughter dance mm. uh, this past, yesterday. Uh, I was going to say this past weekend, but yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome time. Uh, daughter had a had a blast. That's good. Let's see. You were looking super uh, fly. You were, uh, yeah, you, you were looking super fly. I, I I'm trying. Say. I'm trying. You might notice, guys, that I'm trying to grow out my hair a little bit. Um, I noticed some thinning up top, and I've always wanted to grow my hair out long, but I could never get it past like this stage. And so I just happened to work for um, some people that will, you know, 
be okay with that <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> right? Yeah, you. They're be, watching. <laughs> hey, let the man grow his hair out. It's Those just a little bit. Locks, all I right? promise. You got I'll some luscious locks. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I always wanted to. Uh, this is you know. Don't get mad at me, but if I was a Caucasian guy and I could grow my hair out, I always envisioned myself like being in the pool and like being under and like coming up out of the pool <laughs> the, and being able to do the yeah. wop wop with the wop. Come on, man. Oh, on, man. On, the man. herbal essence, to, dude. Oh, come on, man. Just wop wop with the whoop. That's all I want to do. Just one time. Just let me do that one time and then I'll come back to to being Ray. So I'm sorry. <laughs> just hey, let man. me do that one I'm time. Just, just, just want to do it one time, man. But okay. All right, back to you. Back We're to on to you, no, pal. No, your week, so your week, your week. So, oh yeah, the, the, week was was good. Good. the week was good. The week was good. Very hectic, but good. Still hectic. Yeah. Uh, we're rolling into another week. I actually ended up having to work the weekend, which boohoo. But um, I don't normal. I normally try to like really take two days off because family needs it, wife needs it, things like that. And uh, you know, if I can, I. This is actually the first weekend that I've worked in a really long time, both days. So, mm. um, super blessed to be able to do that. But, Absolutely. Um, anyway, how was your week, man? It's been um, it's been a pretty good week as well. Um, as you know, we're busy, busy as always, um, but nothing that we can't handle. Um, spend some time uh, with the kiddos, which is great. Um, I know this is timestamp for. When we'll put it out, but today is uh, my oldest my oldest daughter's birthday, so I got to spend a lot of Happy time with birthday. her. Happy birthday, my baby girl! Oh my gosh, she's so special. But um, spent some time with her. I uh, got a nice cookie cake, and um, my thing is, we go to you know a store, you know a tour store or whatever. And my thing is, we have four minutes. All right. Whatever you can put in your hands and you can hold in four minutes, Ooh. you get. So let's go. So, you know, they think the four minutes is fine. But then once I get to, <laughs> hey, 59, 58, then those <laughs> eyeballs are like, oh, no. <laughs> and it's like they almost get a nosebleed just trying to, you know, figure out <laughs> you know, what they're going to do. So she just grabbed a bunch of stuff. So uh, but she got a lot of things that she wanted. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a nice little um, full party for next weekend. But mm. uh, so cool. that was good. So, man, just, uh, you know, spending time with the fam, uh, a lot of work this week. And uh, we got a real, real good week coming up um, here at work as well that, um, you know, just serving some folks and, you know, just being a blessing, man. That's, that's about it. So that's awesome. Yeah, man. We will get into his work. His work is super interesting. Just so, you know, get, get you some uh, little tidbits, tantalize you a little bit. Um, Really interesting, uh, uh, what do you say, industry and job <laughs> and uh, <laughs> things. Um, All the things. Yeah, if you know Ray, then you know. Uh, very cool stuff. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, But uh, anyways, so um, very cool. I'm glad that, uh, that you had a good week. Man, uh, if we, oh, you know what, something kind of a milestone for me on, on my work this week, we did, uh, our best we've ever done sales wise last, uh, yesterday on Saturday. And so just, that's a win, man. And that's it a is, win, man. uh, was it May, win, or March, man. um, March 20 something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's a really big, that's a really big deal. That's great, man. For somebody like me. So, yeah. Anyways, um, well, congratulations, man. I love it, man. Thank I you. I love hearing, you know, I've, I've told you this a few times. I love hearing the the great things that are happening in your life. And, um, man, I champion you, man. So I, I love Thank it, you man. So, so much. congratulations on, on, on those, you know, those milestones and um, breaking records and things. And I hope, you know, um, you know, you're doing some, some good work. And like I said, man, you're, you're a great dude. So anything that's, that's happening to your life, you, Number one, you do deserve it, um, but um, I just hope you know how great and how valuable you are to um, to where you work and your whole team and those people who are under you, man. They you, they got a good one. So, ditto, ditto, baby, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Couldn't couldn't have said it better myself at all. Yeah, man. 
Um, so, uh, so this is where we're going to talk a little bit about ourselves here. Um, so I'm going to start here in the eighties. Uh, so we were both born in the eighties. He was born Ray was born in, uh, 86 and I was born in 87. Um, I was born in Sacramento, California and, um, in a suburb called Carmichael. It's a uh, county of Carmichael, I want to say, or no, it's Sacramento County in Carmichael, suburb of Carmichael. Anyway, um, and uh, the interesting situation, uh, so this is kind of telling you guys where we're coming from, where we're coming from. Um, interesting, uh, some of this is going to be hard to talk about, yeah. maybe, yeah. Um, but um, I'm not embarrassed to talk about it. I have, um, um, anyway, we'll, we'll start there. So uh, I was born in Sacramento, California. Uh, to my mother, um, my, my grandparents were actually there. My grandpa was there, which was kind of a big deal because when I was born, uh, because, uh, he has seven kids and I was the first child he had ever been, you know, present to, he wasn't there in the, in the room while I was being born, but he was there at the hospital while my mom was there. I was the first kid he got to go experience that stuff with in a hospital, Wow. Out of seven kids, he didn't get to see any of them. But me, his grandkid, you know, he he was there to to see me. So there was something, some kind of special it's about special, that, yeah. it's you know. Um, and um, so backing up a tad, before I was born, um, my uh, biological father freaked out that he was going to be a dad. Um, he had uh, he was immature. At the time, he was into himself very much, and he would say the same thing. I talked to him before we did this, uh, we're doing this now, and uh, just kind of give, get a level set, let him know, hey, this is what I'm going to be talking about, and, uh, you know, how would you say it? Mm. And uh, he said, you know, I was just very immature. I was very, um, and also very afraid. His dad was uh, pretty physically abusive to him and his brothers. He has three brothers, or two brothers. Uh, three boys on his side, and uh, he was um, just kind of self-consumed um, and also very afraid of becoming his dad because of having a kid, you know, not knowing what to do, having a, a hairpin trigger, you know, to anger. And um, and so he, he uh, basically was nowhere to be found when my mom was in labor, and at the time, my mom and him had uh, a place that they lived at, like a little cabin up in, uh, in the mountains around Lake Tahoe. And it was snowing, and my mom's in labor in a cabin in the middle of nowhere with her husband nowhere to be found. Oh. And so, um, long story short, my grandpa had to drive all the way down to pick up my mom who, so if, uh, Sacramento's r like hours away from Lake Tahoe and she's up in the snowy mountains yeah, and she's in labor. So she, he, he drove all the way. My grandpa drove all the way down to go pick her up. Crazy situation when anybody's in labor or going through labor pains or things oh, like that, goodness. about to have a baby. Yeah. You don't want to be in a car for hours. No, no. You don't want to hear the word hour. You know, you want to hear, I'm at a hospital. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Um, so drove all the way down to pick up my mom, drove all the way back up to, to Sacramento wow. and uh, ended up having me there. And, um, and so... Um, my mom and I ended up moving in with my grandparents, um, stayed there. And, um, ironically enough, um, her, my aunts and uncles had all kind of at some point lived with my grandparents as they were like, you know, got married, you know, got their feet underneath them, you know, uh, started having kids, things like that. Okay, cool. You know, y'all live here a little bit and then you go, you know, set you free again. Yeah. Being able to have, um, you know, that, that backing, um, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, not necessarily make mistakes, but Hey, like we're, 
we can save a little bit here, do a little bit, and they can yeah. go back to grandma. Or we'll mm-hmm. go back to mom and dad's and have that open space to where it's, right. it's love and they're not being treated bad. That's that's a blessing, man. That's great. Through yeah, so some some through college, some through this and that. Anyway, mm-hmm. so we, um, you know, I hung out with my grandparents a lot. My grandpa was retired, and my my grandma never worked. I don't think I don't think she, I don't think she ever. Well, I take that back. Uh, she had. She had jobs before her and my grandpa got married, but that was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and she might have done, you know, volunteer. I knew she volunteered at the at her church a lot. But um, anyhow, uh, so I, I stayed at home with my grandparents, and they were like my second set of parents. And um, it was a very unique situation because my grandma is, and both of them are, were very loving my grandpa was basically my first dad, and um, I lived with them from when I was born till I was four. And my biological father um, came in into the picture every once in a while to see me. You know, um, whenever you know, it's embarrassing to you know basically. I'm sure he didn't ever want to see my grandpa because my grandpa probably would have. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. beat him up pretty oh, good yeah. or oh, something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would have been a bad situation. Yeah, for sure. Um, but um, one of the f- earliest memories that I have is um, my grandpa, no, um, me going to meet my biological dad at a park. And apparently this happened a few times uh, before my mom got remarried. But um, as soon as, at some point, um, my mom and my biological dad got a divorce within the first year or two or something like that. And then, um, so about, uh, what was it? 1980. Oh, uh, let's see. 19, 1991. Actually, my mom got remarried when I was about four years old. And, um, what's interesting is I've got siblings uh, from my stepdad and my mom, they're my half brother and sisters, but they're, I just call them my brother and sister. That's mm-hmm. who I grew up with. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, they, for years for their, their lifetime, they've, they've seen a picture of my mom and who I call my dad in, uh, this picture and I'm in it and I'm four years old yeah. getting yeah. married. Yeah. <laughs> and they never thought to, uh, anything about it until my sister was like, I don't know. She must have been like between five and seven or something like that. And she's like, wait a minute. Did you, what? How are you in this picture when mom and dad were getting married? So, um, so yeah, that was, uh, so some, some people I know grow up with a dad without a dad and, uh, they're really like, they harbor that like kind of anger. Um, I attribute a lot of this to my mom, but she never har- harbored that anger towards my biological dad. She was always like understanding that he is a part of me and he's the reason why I exist. So she didn't, she never want to like, you know, say he's a bad guy or he's a, you know, these are bad things. You know, she knew eventually he would come around and, uh, and he eventually did by finding God, you know? Um, Jesus and stuff like that, uh, kind of was, his life was transformed. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, so when I was four, my, my, uh, mom and my stepdad got married and almost immediately, uh, we, um, my, my dad, I'm just going to call him my dad. He's my stepdad, but I'm going to call him my dad. Yeah. Um, Respect. he, he was in the, uh, air force, uh, and he was a navigator for a C-130 Hercules, so that's that big giant uh, four prop plane that has the it looks like a whale, and uh, it, the the front is kind of short and stubby, and the back kind of comes up like this, and it has a giant hatch that you can put like tanks in and stuff like that, huh. and it's it's got so much lift, it's so powerful that they would use this airplane to. Um, take off in a really short distance and they would come and drop off all different kinds of like cargo and stuff like that. And so, um, that's, that was his job was navigating that thing through storms. So you got your pilots and you got your navigator, your navigator was in charge of, you know, the flight path and flight plan and, and, um, maps and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you can, um, and this was way before GPS was where it is now. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, so he's in the military, he's in the air force and immediately after, uh, my mom and him get married, uh, the air force is like, Oh yeah, congratulations. You're stationed to Japan. And so, <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh oh wow. boy. Yeah. So every person that I had ever met, every, except for my mom and dad, um, uh, they were all going to be staying in the, U- in the U S and I was going to be going to this foreign country and I didn't really like have a lot of time to think about it, but yeah. golly, that's a, um, lot. that's a lot guys. So I left everything behind along with my mom and my dad. And, uh, uh, we went to Okinawa, Japan and, um, it was, a uh, it was crazy. So, when you when you live in the military, which I had never done before, obviously I was four years old. Um, really, none of us had any experience living in another country um, with the military. You mm-hmm. know, uh, so in Okinawa, Japan, they have like three different uh, military bases that are the the United States military bases. They've got a naval base, a an air force base and an army base all on this little bit, little bitty Island. And then the rest of the Island is off base, which is like the rest of like actual Japan and mm-hmm. uh, where the Okinawans are basically long story short, when Pearl Harbor happened, we basically, this Island is so far away from the, from mainland Japan. We just took it over. And oh, at some okay. point we gave it back to the country of Japan. Uh-huh. Um, but we were like, yeah, we're going to keep our military bases here. So, um, to, which is it's like, it's, it's, it's both our game, but yeah, it's at my house. So yeah. it's, it's like, it's ours, but yeah. It's, it's I mean, mine. you can have some you of this back. Some, but <laughs> the PlayStation stay at my house. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so you can have all the games, but is it really the PlayStation? Uh, I stay at my house. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys get that <laughs> reference. Um, <laughs> oh man. So, um, so we're living in Japan and, uh, crazy stuff there. Um, so uh, I was bringing it back into, uh, some, some people that grow up with a, without a dad, they, they harbor kind of like this anger, uh, for their dad. I didn't really have that. I actually just really desperately wanted a dad. And mm. so, um, basically, uh, I, I was so like happy to have a dad happy to, or excited to like do father and son things with my stepdad who I call dad. And, um, and we did, we did, we did do some stuff, uh, you know, throughout the years that were, you know, it was really good. And, you know, it was my, my, my dad's first kid, um, he didn't really know how to be a dad. And all of a sudden he's the dad of a four year old, you know? And so I'm sure I annoyed the heck out of him. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's hard to, especially when you don't have much of a bond with a kid, you know, that's yeah. somebody else's. Yeah. I'm sure that had to be kind of difficult. Um, you know, and he's very, uh, you know, his, his brain is very, um, you know, engineer oriented. He's a, he's a, a college graduate as an engineer oh, yeah. and, um, v- so very type a personality plus say, type that. a logic. This yes. is how it is. Yes. X, Y, Z. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and I, um, I give him a lot of credit for, for what he did for me and for what he did for our family and, uh, forgive me, uh, you know, uh, being a dad, being there for me and, uh, my brother and sister and, and being a husband and, um, uh, and stuff like that. He was gone a lot, uh, while we were in Japan, uh, in the military. Um, we have, they have these things called TDY in the air force at least. And, uh, it's basically like, um, long, long time frame, um, long periods of time where, uh, a person will be gone. You know, the service member will be gone doing some sort of mission that they can't tell anybody about. Mm. And, um, you know, they might be doing reconnaissance, they might be doing just uh, practice, they might be, but they, a lot of times, uh, the military will practice as if it was real. So they'll be out for a long time. It could be something real, could be something, could be nothing, you know? So, 
uh, spent a lot of time, you know, hanging out with my mom, mm-hmm. uh, figuring out things to do. I got really into Legos and, um, when you're in the, uh, when you're in the military and you're uprooted from everything, you know, and planted somewhere that you don't know anybody, you get really good at, uh, entertaining yourself and making new friends. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. that's kind of what I did. I had to really kind of break out of my shell, this shy little kid that only knew, you know, cousins and had a few church friends, you know, <laughs> suddenly I had to learn how to be friends with everybody. So, yeah, yeah. um, and the cool, uh, one cool thing about that is that, um, being in the military, you have, uh, so many different types of people, black, you know, Asian, um, you know, uh, Filipino, you got Spanish, you got, you know, just people from all German, French, um, you know, we didn't have a ton of these, you know, people, but we had people from all from different, all over, right? Yeah. yeah just, all over Puerto Rican yeah, people. Yeah. We had pe- just all different just kinds of service members. Yeah. yeah. Men, women, didn't matter. Anyway. Uh, one thing my mom wanted me to say is that, uh, um, it didn't matter like what rank you were or what, um, you know, whatever it happened to be, you know, if you came in contact with this, these people, uh, like in your department, whatever department you were in, you ended up becoming like family, like with these people. And, uh, to this day we have, uh, family members that are, um, or friends that are just like family members. Um, you know, we could pick up the phone and, and, uh, you know, nowadays we can just look up on, on Facebook and, and see how they're doing and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But, you know, we're close enough to where it'd be like, Hey, what's going on? You know? And one of my, um, people I've already talked about was my uncle Fred. Um, I've got, uh, Gary and, um, a couple of Gary's actually <laughs> and, uh, Angela and, um, a few others. Sorry if I'm, uh, kind of on the spot, but, um, anyway, um, and, uh, right before this is kind of like skipping past a few years, but, uh, you know, we went off and on base, you know, learning about the Japanese culture, got to, uh, really appreciate some really good sushi and chicken on a stick is what uh, everybody called it. It's teriyaki chicken on a stick. Nice. Um, that was really popular then. And, um, if anybody's watching this and has been to Okinawa, Japan, it was a place called Mickey's. And, um, uh, if you know, you know, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, and this is back when, a and, uh, okay. So a little tidbit about people from, for people that don't know much about living on a base. Um, if you were, even though we were in the air force, my dad was in the air force. Um, we had multiple family members, uh, like, kids and wife and stuff like that. And if you had that, you lived on the, um, the Marine base and they had, um, actual, like, you know, kind of houses. They were like, uh, cement duplexes basically. And so the best I could, I could describe it as, is like kind of a nice project, <laughs> you know, like it. it wasn't red no. brick, yeah, yeah, but no. it was I like, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and, um, I mean, literally like our, our trash cans were like between houses and everything was made out of cement. (laughs) Um, and, uh, you know, it didn't matter who your neighbors were. You were like, if you're a kid, you're going to go play with the kids, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, so that, that was that. Um, so that was when I was four till I was eight. This is still in the eighties. Uh, and, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's actually past the eighties. Excuse me. That's in the, in the nineties. So we'll go, we'll go the to 80s, you on eighties, early nineties. Yeah. yeah 80s, I mean, early nineties. I mean, cause we, we, we were born, you know, in the late eighties. So, I mean, that kind of, kind of that whole time period kind of runs all together. So yeah, right. that makes sense. So, so, um, man, being in Japan, like I, you know, when you told me this, like I had no idea, you know, when we talked about this a while ago, um, but that's a huge culture shock, you know, for you, your mom, you know, <laughs> your, your dad, just, you know, coming from, you know, the States and going over there, man, that's, that's pretty big, pretty, pretty big. But, um, 
something that you just said that I'm going to touch on when you reference how your mom didn't speak ill about uh, your biological father um, and just the the maturity that she had to have to do that that's huge my mom also did the same where she didn't speak ill about my biological father Mm -hmm. but for me i didn't look at it the way that you looked at it i Mm. was mad that she wouldn't speak bad about him i Uh. wanted her to speak ill about him yeah but she just she never would isn't she never praised him or, you know, spoke, you know, great about him or anything like that. Mm. Um, it, w- it wasn't anything, you know, like I said, she never said anything, you know, just that he's the greatest guy or anything. She just right. said, hey, you know, that's your dad. Respect him whenever y'all do have any type of, you know, communication once I found out about him. Um, but like I said, she just never said anything ill about him. Um, but for me, um, born in born in eighty six, I was born in a um, small town in Louisiana. I was born in Monroe, Louisiana, and you know Louisiana, we have parishes, not counties, which is so strange. You know, I know everybody's like, "What in the world?" So this is a uh, was a Washtenaw parish. Um, so Monroe is Monroe. I mean Monroe, Funroe. You have Monroe, which is here and then you have West Monroe, which is there, and a lot of people know West Monroe because of you know Doug Dynasty and things like that. The high school team they had a you know a powerhouse football team for quite a while. So, yep. uh, but Monroe is where I'm from. And um, can I ask you a question real quick? Let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So settle this for us. Is it Monroe or is it Monroe? I, I, Actually, I'm hearing like so a, like a, a, in between. A bit. So Mun, I go Mun. Monroe, Mun. I'm gonna Mon, go Mun, not Mon, like not money. M O N. So where's the emphasis? <laughs> What's Mon, the level? Mun. Yeah, it's yeah. Monroe, 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 Monroe. Well, Monroe. you would know. You I'm Monroe. Would, yeah, I'm Monroe. Yeah, Monroe. It's, it's, okay. I'm from Monroe. I'm from Monroe, Monroe. Louisiana. Okay. Monroe, there you Louisiana. Have it, guys. That's where I'm from. All right. Uh, so. For me, my life started 86. Uh, my mother and my, you know, do I call him my dad, my father? But my mother and my father, they were not married. Uh, my mother met my father when they were in college. And, um, you know, they had a relationship and I was um, the product of their relationship. Uh, my mother moved back home to um, they were they were in South Louisiana in school. Moved back home uh, with my grandfather, and my grandfather pretty much just took the reins and was my dude. So, as you said, your grandfather was your first dad. My yeah. grandfather was absolutely my first dad. Yeah, everything of me um, of my formative years in the beginning, my foundation came from um, a special uncle of mine, uh, my uncle Andrew, who is, I'll talk about him as well, and my grandfather. Those two were two men who were in my life from the beginning. So my grandfather uh, was there with my mom when I was born. Um, I did not know of my biological father until uh, fifth grade in elementary. So I didn't know of him. Okay. So. Man, this is about to get deep because I haven't had this conversation uh, with my mom. Um, and I'm going to be as respectful as I can with, you know, saying this because this is my story. You know, this is my life. Um, hey, this is you, right? This is me, man. Like, right? So um, for the longest of time, I thought that um, this one gentleman was my father. And I will leave his, I'll leave his name and leave him nameless because he has a family and um, he's uh, passed away. Um, but um, people, some people would know who this individual is. Uh, he and my mother had uh, a relationship. And um, whenever I would see this individual, it was for very brief moments, but the moments were so cool because um, this individual had an awesome car and took me to school a couple of times. And, you know, so it was, it was like things that were, 
it made an impression on me because, you know, you're just so young and just to have, you know, just you riding this cool car and go to school and everybody asks, you know, this, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's my dad and da-da-da. But, you know, that's I've, – I've processed those things and I'm, I'm in a better place now. But um, that individual um, – passed away at a very, very early age. Mm-hmm. I was, I believe, in the third grade, found out that this individual um, passed away. Um, that was very, very tough. Um, so that was the first time I really uh, mourned someone and had that grief and all of that. Um, so I'm going through that process, as I said, you know, third grade. Um I'm at elementary school and I'm I'm actually attending the elementary school that my uncle Andrew, who was a very big part of my life, um, he's the principal there. Mm. So uh, I was actually able to start school at four. I started kindergarten at four years old instead of wow. five. So he Dude. he pushed some paperwork. Thank yeah, you, Andrew. Got, the got me in. So we we got we got me in the school. So I, I started uh, kindergarten early. So I'm I'm Kindergarten, first grade, second grade. So, third grade, we get, um, like I said, the news of the of the passing, and um, you know, my mom she tells me, and so I'm, I'm hurt. I go to the funeral home. I see him at the wake. She wouldn't let me go to the funeral. Um, and so you know, the next you know year or two, I'm you know mourning this loss, and um, man, <clears throat> I'm at home. This is uh, fifth grade, and I'm walking just through our house. I walk in my mom's room and I see, uh, it's, I, I'll tell you, it's just the slightest bit of a uh, birthday card. And I'm looking and I'm like, well, I know my mom isn't, you know, it looks like a baseball. Like, well, my, who would give my mom a baseball light blue birthday card? That's weird. So I was like, I want to see what this is. So uh-huh. I, I pull it. And it says, you know, happy birthday, Ronaldo, blah, 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 you know, your dad. And I'm like, oh. okay, this is uh, a little weird, but okay. So I stood on it for a couple of days and um, I just went to my mom and I said, I saw a baseball card in your room. And she looked at me and she was like, we need to have a talk. So, oh wow, uh, we had a talk. She told me that uh, that individual who wrote that card was my biological father. Um, that was a lot to take in. Uh, at what eight nine years old, a fifth fifth grade. So. <clears throat> So processing that and having to tell, I didn't have to tell, but telling my classmates who who were there when in the third grade that uh-huh. actually that guy wasn't my dad, but actually I do have a dad. And to get ridiculed, like they really, this is the first time I've talked about this, really, Paul. They really went in on me, man. Like they really? went, oh man, where I'm from, it was good to live in the negative. When, like oh, I, I'm, wow. I, like I said, we're, we're, that at that time it was just negative, negative, negative. So it wasn't a lot of uplifting and you know speaking well. So yeah, they they got on your boy. Like I mean, they were they mm. were bad talking me, man. So. That was tough to uh, to go through, man. It was real, real tough. Um, but my mom, she reached out to uh, my dad. Um, he wrote me a letter, and I wrote him a letter, and I visited him um, going into sixth grade. He lived in Miami, Florida at the time. Mm-hmm. I had a great aunt who lived in Fort Lauderdale who we would spend summers with sometimes. And so during that, that trip, we were able to um, – link up with him. He came to my aunt's house and um, it was nice um, to meet him. And um, he shared with me that, you know, I had um, two older brothers, a younger brother and a younger sister. And um, so um, that next week he came, picked me up, took me to them, introduced me to them. Um, 
the two older brothers, they were cool. The the younger brother, he was real, real young, so really didn't interact with him. Mm-hmm. But uh, the sister who was his daughter, she just, I, 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 it, she she wasn't feeling it, man. She wasn't feeling it at all. She, uh, <laughs> Who's this she new would, guy? Yeah, yeah. She would write <laughs> notes like, you know, I hate Ronaldo. I oh. hate that he's here. Da, da, da. I mean, it was it was bad, man. Oh, to where they were, dang. like, finding stuff and, like, throwing stuff away before I were, woke up and stuff. But... Hey, I mean, I don't, I don't hold that against her. I know it's, you know, th- things happen in life, but I mean, it was, it was, it was tough. So I was only there for a couple of days. Um, but you stayed with was, them for days. I stayed with them for a couple of days. Uh, wow. Now my aunt, uh, my aunt, um, you know, she knew exactly where I was, and right. I called her, and my mom called them. I talked to them every day, but it was, it was comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. I, I met my grandparents, a couple of uncles, so. You know, that, that was just a, a different, a different cool. time, man. It was a, it was a different, a different thing. But having to process that at a oh, young age, man, was just so hard. Um, and I harbored those angry feelings. I mean, for a long time, Paul. I mean, I'm, I recently just was able to, um, you know, break that time down, and, you know just process all of that. It was, it was, it was, it was real tough, man. It was real tough. And, you know, during that time as well, my mother, um, you know, I I have a younger sister. She was born in 89. Um, so we have different fathers, but, um, that's my sister. Um, and Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, no, that is my sister. Mm -hmm. I'm her brother. That's my sister is no, no fake in that. Um, but after she was born, and a few years later, my mom, she um, started to date this gentleman, and um, she got married, and that was when my stepdad came into, and I did not have the luxury of having um, a good bonus father as you did. Mm. Uh, mine was uh, a piece, all right? Mm. Um, he put me he, he put me through a lot. Really? Um he was a bad person and um, just, I don't know what I would do if I saw him now, but I do know that in my early twenties, my later twenties, if I saw him, it was going to be some furniture moving Yeah, off top. That's, that's mm-hmm. bare minimum, mm-hmm. bare minimum furniture moving max, the worst. Okay, somebody may be swimming <laughs> with the fishies. Okay, type of deal. Yeah. So, he was just a bad person, man, and he just did a lot of bad things and caused a lot of havoc. And um, yeah, it was it was just a tough time. And I'm thankful that my mom, um, because he would do things sneak sneakily, you know, that, yeah. to where she wouldn't see, she wouldn't know, and he would punish me certain ways that, um, well, she wouldn't find out. Uh, she didn't know a lot of things until they were divorced. And when I told her these things, so um, no, no, uh, no sexual abuse. Not that's so. Don't think it was just a little physical, just f- physical abuse. You know, just he put that his hands. Put, put, yeah, it was bad. He put his hands on me. You know, things like that. So, um, but yeah, but that was it. Was expand was, on that a little bit. What does that mean? Put his hands on you. Um, can you tell? Can you? Yeah, see, yeah. You know? I mean, I'll you know, um, uh, hits. Punches, um, a lot of so you, I, we got spanked with the belt. I mean that was a, we we got that, but it was it's a difference between four or five licks with a belt versus fifty, sixty licks with a belt. That's a little different. Um, I remember one time I had to go to the hospital because I was a big wrestling fan and. Um, he said he wanted to uh, show me some wrestling moves and do some things. And he was a pretty stout dude. I mean, he was, I'll say he, um, I'll say six foot six one. He was about, you know, 235, but he was rock hard. I mean, he was a, he, he lift. Um, so he kind of like suplexed me a little bit, put me on the ground. And then he took his shoulder and put his shoulder in my chest. And it was almost like he did a handstand but it was just a handstand on his chest and I on couldn't you? breathe. I couldn't breathe. And I was like trying oh, to move wow. and trying to, and I just couldn't breathe, man. And I mean, all wow. the wind was out of me. I thought I passed out. Um, and then my mom, you know, she got home and I was just like, I feel terrible. And he was like, Oh yeah, we were just wrestling. I don't know. I, I may mean, went a little too hard. And so she took me to the hospital, but just things like that, man, just, 
Dang. Ridiculous. Okay. Ridiculous. Um, so, so was he into wrestling too or no? No, nah, I man. He just wanted to. He know, just wanted to rough wanted you to, up. You know, just rough me up a little Let me bit. Show man. you this. Yeah, exactly. Dang. Exactly. So um, she, um, we, he, he was out of our lives my um, sixth grade, going into middle school, junior high school. Um, that's when he he was he was out of out of our lives. So so now we're you know transitioning you know going from elementary school. It's you know just me and my mom uh, and my sister, and you know we're just trying to you know just navigate it. You know the three of us, and you know try to get that that thing figured out. And that's kind of where um where we you know start going into you know those you know, those mid to mid to late nineties. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Very cool. So, yeah, the uh, started. Uh, I kind of started going into the nineties a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, wow, <laughs> that's a lot to unpack right there, bro. man. So, um, I definitely got my fair share of uh, spanking. Okay, so um, de- definitely, I don't know what that's like. I don't know what that's like. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Um, I, I do know, unfortunately, a significant amount of people that have gone through some physical trauma with their parents and step parents, especially, and that's just rough. Um, also, uh, if you're a step parent out there, kudos to you for not, uh, you know, beating on your kids and for keeping your temper for keeping your temper and for being patient with a kid that's not yours. You're not bonded with, you know? Um, there is something different. I'm, I don't have any stepkids, but, um, I've spoken to lots of people that have had, uh, you know, they have blended families and, um, it is, it is tough. It's, it's difficult for, um, that, that parent that, that, you know, it's, you're not my kid, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of a, there is something different about, um, you know, a kid being yours and a kid not being yours. I'm sorry. It's just, it just is. And that's, and that's where I think people tend to try to look at things from certain lenses because we are, we, we're animals. We are, uh, warm blooded creatures and you can look at just the animal kingdom and you will see, Hey, if, a new line comes into the pride and he whoops the old line and uh, that old line had cubs. Yep. Unfortunately, them cubs is out of here They're because done. that new line wants to come in and pr- make babies with those lionesses and get, the, get them ready to where they want to have more children. So yep. get them out of the way so they can do that. Now, we as human beings, we have feelings. We we're not going to be doing all of that, but there's there are instincts that are right. in us that some people have that you know they can't cut them on, cut them off. They can't. They they're unable to just do the good portion of that, and they can they do that yeah. bad portion. You know, so it's it, I. I, I I'm trying to get my words right to to articulate that no, the best right way that there. I can, yeah. man. But it's 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 tough, and it's something that you know, step parents like we say, kudos to you all mm-hmm. uh, for Seriously. being good step parents and being able to give that love and be able to care about you know a child that isn't necessarily of you, but you know you love that child. Like that's that's that's, that's wonderful, man. So thank yeah, you. I, I know plenty of people that um, plenty of people. I know a handful of people that have adopted, and um, you know they 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 treat they raise their kid as their own and stuff like that. It's amazing. I don't get it. Like like I don't I don't know. <laughs> there are some t- some some points in life where it's like. Oh my gosh, I don't like I don't even know how to treat this kid that is born of my own <laughs> loins, you know? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Uh maybe oh, you guys yeah. know what I mean. Oh boy. Okay. Oh so boy. um uh anyways, uh <laughs> you know, I, I definitely don't uh, 
Um, that's, that's just a rough situation to be, um, you know, physically abused. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of mental stuff there too. Like, am I not good enough? And, you know, what's wrong with me and stuff. I went through a lot of that. Although I didn't get like angry with anybody necessarily. I was more or less, uh, angry with myself. Like, you know, um, I, um, even though I got the father, you know, that I wanted, I got, um, or so I thought, you know, and, um, uh, I still struggled with, uh, bonding with my stepdad. Right. Um, and, uh, that just kind of became a thing, you know, I was very happy to have a dad and, you know, looking back, super blessed to have, thank you dad for, you know, raising me and, uh, giving me the opportunities that you did and the time and the attention and the spending the money and things like that. Wow. Just wow. Um, but, um, anyway, getting into the nineties. Um, so my mom remarried when I was four. Okay. And we moved to Japan when I was four (laughs) that same year, actually about a month (laughs) after they got married, we moved to Japan. How crazy. And so, um, what, what an experience, what an adventure, you know, and, uh, living in Japan, um, we had, uh, we had a lot of opportunities to go off base. And so, uh, we got to experience kind of like the Japanese culture. Well, the Okinawans, uh, is what they call themselves. Uh, so they're Japanese, uh, but they are very, uh, their culture is very different from mainland Japan. And, uh, you know, if you talk to anybody from Okinawa, that's what they'll say is that the Okinawans are kind of like their own breed, I guess, sort of in their own way. And, um, anyways, uh, so here I am like a white kid. I'm a toe headed white kid, which means like, you know, my hair is so light colored that I, it looks white. <laughs> and so uh, the most color on my body was actually my skin, you know, a and toe headed white. Is that what toe headed white kid? Yeah. I just want to make sure I heard that right. Okay. Yep. All right. I, something about your head looks like a toe. Anyway, okay. um, I had never heard that, that, uh, <laughs> until my, I met one, my wife, that's her, her term anyway. Um, so, you know, I'm super blonde headed kid, uh, walking around, you know, uh, Japan and all these Japanese people, you know, they have like black hair, very dark black hair and, uh, you know, just look different than me and everything, but I didn't care. You know, everybody's, everybody's my friend. I just want to learn. And I ended up, um, uh, just a little tidbit about that since we're, uh, going through the nineties, my, um, I went to school there, obviously, and um, my mom figured out a way to get a job with uh, a um, a Christian academy. So she was like a gym teacher for them, and so I got to attend school there, included, mm. whatever that means. Okay. So I don't know if she actually got paid for that job or if that was the tuition was you know, her pay that's or part of the package. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, yeah. I think that was it. Um, but, um, it was a really big deal. And, uh, so even though, you know, like you were talking about, like there's kind of like a weird classism in your school where like, you know, uh, you know, who has it worse off or who, who has it better mm-hmm. or what, you know, whatever the same thing might be. You know, this kid has the newest, you know, his parents have the newest car and the biggest house and this, and that, and whatever. Yeah. Apparently, I didn't know this, but, and I didn't know this until I was like an adult. Um, but uh, what my mom told me is that um, it was kind of a really big deal that, um, that I was, that uh, my mom worked for the school and, um, you know, I was a white kid you know, going to this Christian school, um, you know, it was a big deal. Uh, apparently I don't know how, but you know, all the other kids were like, you know, clamoring to want to get to know me or something like that. I don't know, something Hmm. like that. And, uh, but I had no clue. So I was like, friends, yes, I'll take all the friends, please. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, 
and uh, my uh, my elementary teacher, at least one of them, if not the one that taught me through most of my grades, was black. I can't remember her name, but I still do have uh, my elementary uh, yearbook or whatever, mm-hmm. um, and it's got a picture of my class in there and whatnot. Um, and then, um, yeah, went to school off base, which was kind of a big deal, I guess, but I didn't know any different. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, we went off base to eat food and, and go to, you know, different beaches, uh, and experience the culture. Like I said, my dad was gone quite a bit, but when he was there, we would, we'd go have adventures, you know? Um, and, uh, we didn't make a lot of money. Um, so everybody, you know, that, that you hung out with was probably, you know, worked, uh, they were the families of the people that your parent worked for the service member worked with, excuse Mm me. Um, and, uh, it didn't matter if you were a lower rank or a higher rank or black or brown or white or whatever it is. Uh, it was just you would go hang out and have a good time barbecue or, you know, just have a get together and, you know, somebody needed help with uh childcare, you know, this person was available, you know, if somebody needed, you know, whatever happened. Just real communal, like mm-hmm. just, just very, community based, just very, real, yeah. In, in a way that, um, you know, you, you wouldn't, I don't know. You don't really see that, um, today. Absolutely. Not. Um, You know, I live in a neighborhood currently and I really want to love my neighbors and love on them and, and, uh, just, you know, Hey neighbor, how are you doing? You know, Hey, why don't you guys come on and have some dinner with us? You know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I do have some neighbors that are like that, but a lot of them I don't. And uh, I live in a, in a cul-de-sac. I was going to say in a cul-de-sac. In the cul-de-sac, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, maybe things will change, but, um, you know, I, I'd really like to get back to that, but that's how that was, uh, when we were living there anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, towards the end of the eighties or excuse me, towards the end of the nineties, um, um, what, one thing I would do to stay in touch with my grandparents who basically, you know, raised me till I was four is I would go over there every summer, even though I lived in Japan, I would go to uh, my grandparents' house for like what seemed like two months. Oh, we stand still. Are they still in Sacramento? So they still lived in California. So you, so So me and my mom would make the long flight back to uh, California. And so mm -hmm. we'd have to go from Okinawa, Japan to Hawaii to California, or we'd go from Okinawa, from Japan to um, Alaska, and then down to. Uh, California. And a few of these times, uh, they would, um, being a service member's family, they would, um, a lot of times let you fly, um, you know, kind of whenever. And I don't know some, something about like, you didn't have to pay for flights on certain occasions or something. There was one occasion where we ended up flying on a C-130 and you're like strapped to the, to the outside or, you know, to the, I'm sorry. You're, yeah. <clears throat> what? I mean, there, there might've been, uh, seats in the middle, but we were like strapped up to, uh, a harness on the inside to do like a jump to Hawaii or something like that. I don't know. I, I feel like that. Hey, what do you, what know. do you, what are you saying right now? What? <laughs> so a C-130 Hercules, I'm pretty sure that's what we, it was either that or the one that's not prop, uh, driven. It might've been jets which is a different name, but it's basically the same, uh, the same aircraft where it's like there's a giant hull inside of the aircraft inside of the plane and they fill it with stuff and it's going from A to B. Right. And, uh, we happened to be going on this flight to, I think it was Hawaii. And that was just one leg of the jump to go to California. Like I said, went there every summer to go visit my family and my gajillions of cousins that I wanted to go hang out with and family and all that. Um, so we're, if you can imagine, um, like a normal plane without any seats in the middle, just completely empty. And basically on the inside of this plane along the 
uh, outside, like where you see on a normal plane, you have like, um, you have windows and stuff. This one doesn't have windows. It's got, you're talking about the, the interior lining of the, of the, of what we're saying, the plane. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you say outside, Oh no, you know, we're not riding on the outside of the plane. I'm like, we're, Paul, we're, we're like,